Academic Writing Lecture 1 The theme is Paragraph Structure The Three Parts of a Paragraph Lecturer Shmar Lormanova Senior Chief Lecturer Learning Objectives are To define the paragraph To define paragraph structure List types of paragraph Discuss paragraph structure Here you see the examples, that is, terms which will be discussed during the lecture. Persuasive, examples, conclusion, parts of the paragraph, structure, descriptive, principles, order, style, etc. So, a paragraph is a group of related sentences that discuss one and usually only one main idea. A paragraph can be as short as one sentence or as long as ten sentences. The number of sentences is unimportant. However, the paragraph should be long enough to develop the main idea clearly. It will help you to analyze its structure, define management by objective and give one example of it from the reading you have done for this class. A paragraph may also be one part of a longer piece of writing such as an essay or a book. We mark a paragraph by indenting the first word about a half inch, five spaces on a typewriter or computer from the left margin. A paragraph may stand by itself. A paragraph is a unit of writing that consists of one or more sentences focusing on a single idea or topic. A paragraph is made up of sentences that are all related to the same point. Each paragraph is a piece of academic writing, should have one main point or function, for example, introducing the argument or purpose of the writing, making a point in the argument, proposing a course of action, or concluding the argument. A well-written paragraph often has the following structure. Topic sentence this sentence outlines the main idea that will be presented in the paragraph. Support details or examples. This is the first part of the paragraph that presents details, facts, examples, quotes and arguments that support the main idea. Conclusion sentence. This sentence summarizes the main idea of the paragraph. It may also lead the reader to the topic of the next paragraph. So here you see the structure of the paragraph. Topic sentence, that is the topic, what is the topic is trying to discuss, supported sentence, details about the topic, and concluding sentence, which summarizes the main idea or write the topic sentence in, in different ways. The example of a sentence where the, you see here the sentence pronunciation is one area of second language acquisition where children seem to have an advantage over adults. So you hear the analysis of this sentence. Whereas adults normally retain an accent long after they have reached fluency, children usually manage to speak a second language with little or no accent. This difference has been attributed to biological causes. For example, Annenberg claims that after puberty, the brain has lost its plasticity. The result is that children possess a capacity for excellent phonological representation, which adults have lost. So the topic sentence here introduces the topic of the paragraph, and pronunciation, that is. It also links the point to the essay's overall argument about differences between adults and children in learning a second language. Explanation of the advantage difference introduced in the first and third summary of the second and link to the fourth, which gives an example of evidence from biological research. And fifth summary conclusion of her whole paragraph. So there are different types of paragraph. Descriptive paragraph, which describes something or someone. That is, for example, you can write a descriptive paragraph describing your best friend 
including what she likes and dislikes, where she lives, what she wants for her birthday, and her favorite food. Expository paragraph, information paragraph that is, explains an idea. It is also called an information paragraph. For example, you can write an expository paragraph explaining how to make chocolate chip cooks. And third, narrative paragraph. This paragraph describes an event or tells a story, usually in chronological order. As for persuasive paragraph, here it convinces the reader to something. This type of paragraph may start with a phrase like, I think that the support section may include sentences to start with, one reason is, for example, it may end with something like, this is why I think that, for example, you can write a persuasive paragraph telling why people should vote for class president. And in the narrative paragraph, so here, for example of it, you can write a narrative paragraph detailing what you did on your first day of school. Paragraph organization principles. So the first principle is general to specific. So the second, claim and evidence. Third, chronological order. And fourth, most important to least important. Paragraph here typically contains a three-part structure. Introduction, including a topic sentence and transition words. Body, discussing the main thesis using various forms of evidence. Conclusion, commenting and drawing connections. Paragraph principles are the first, each paragraph should contain one new point in your overall thesis. Each paragraph should be able to start on its own and have its own internal structure. Each paragraph should state its purpose early on in the form of a topic sentence. So, as for paragraph organization principles, different ways of organizing ideas in a paragraph I include General to specific start from the most general idea in your topic sentence and then use the following sentences to bring in specific examples. In the examples above the first and the second, which we have discussed, both examples are the organizing principle. Problem and solution start by stating a problem in the topic sentence and then use the following sentences to explain how the problem may be solved. Claim and evidence. So, Present a claim in your topic sentence and then provide evidence in the following sentences. Claim and counterclaim or counterargument. Present a claim in your topic sentence that you don't agree with and then present an opposing claim or argument against that claim. This is used when you are trying to argue against an objection that your reader might take to your argument. As for chronological order, Start with the topic or main point in your topic sentence, then introduce events relating to that topic or point in time sequence in the following sentences. This is especially useful when you need to present a historical overview of something. Most important to list, least important is the next. It is that is you have to start with the topic or main point in your topic sentence, then introduce supporting points in order to or in importance of in the following sentences. And the next you see the paragraph typically its structure that is usually cons consists of introduction, body, conclusion and paragraph principles here are given. And how to write a paragraph? Some device advices. So decide what is the main topic of the paragraph is going to be before you begin writing your paragraph, you must have a clear idea of what the paragraph is going to be about. This is because a paragraph is essentially a collection of sentences that all relate to one central topic. Without a definite idea of what the main topic is, your paragraph will lack focus and unity. In order to pin down the exact topic of your paragraph, you should ask yourself a number of questions. What is the prompt I have been given? If you are writing a paragraph as a response or answer to a particular prompt, such as 
You have decided to donate money to charity. Which charity do, I choose, do you choose and why? Or describe your favorite day of the week. You will need to think carefully about that prompt and make sure you are directly addressing it rather than going off topic. What are the main ideas or issues that I need to address? Here you have to think about the topic you are being asked or have decided to write about and consider what the most relevant ideas or issues relating to that topic are. As paragraphs are usually relatively short, it is important that you try to hit on all the main ideas without going off topic. Whom I, am I writing for? Think about who the intended readership of the paragraph or paper is going to be. What is their prior knowledge? Are they familiar with the topic at hand? Or will it require a number of explanatory sentences? If your paragraphs are part of a larger essay, writing an essay outline can help you define the main ideas or goals of each paragraph. Write down information and ideas relating to that topic. Once you have a clear idea of what you want to address in your paragraph, you can start organizing your thoughts by writing down your ideas on a notepad or word document. There is no need to write, about, to write out full sentences just yet, just jot down some keywords and phrases. Once you see everything on paper, you may get a clear idea of which points are essential to include in your paragraph and which points are superfluous. At this point, you may realize that there is a gap in your knowledge and that it will be necessary to look up some facts and figures to support your argument. It is a good idea to do this research now, and you will have all the relevant information easily at hand when it comes to the writing stage. Then figure out how you want to structure your paragraph. Now that all your thoughts, ideas, facts and figures are laid out clearly in front of you, you, start, you can start to think about how you want to structure your paragraph. Consider each of the points you wish to address and try to arrange them in a logical order. This will make your paragraph more coherent and easier to read. This new order may be chronological, may put the most important information first or may just make the paragraph easier and more interesting to read. It all depends on the topic and style of the paragraph you wish, you wish to write. Once you have decided where you want everything to go, you can rewrite your points according to this new structure. This will help to make the writing process a lot faster and more straightforward. The first sentence of your paragraph, as you remember, needs to be topic sentence. It is an introductory line that addresses what the main idea or thesis of the paragraph is going to be. It should contain the most important and relevant point you wish to make regarding the topic, thus summarizing the paragraph as a whole. As for supporting details, uh, once you have written and are happy with your topic sentence, you can start to fill in the rest of the paragraph. This is where the detailed, well-structured notes you wrote earlier will come in handy. Make sure that your paragraph is coherent, which means that it is easy to read and understand, that each sentence connects with the next and that everything flows nicely as a whole. To achieve this, try to write clear, simple sentences that express exactly what you want to say. Then write a concluding sentence. The concluding sentence of your paragraph should tie everything together. A good concluding sentence will reinforce the idea outlined in your topic sentence, but now it has all the weight of the evidence or arguments contained in your supporting sentences behind it. After reading the concluding sentence, the reader should have no doubt as to the accuracy or relevance of the paragraph as a whole. Know when to move to a new paragraph. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell where one paragraph should end and another begin. Like there are a number of guidelines you can follow which can make the decision to move on to a new paragraph, an obvious one. The most basic guideline to follow is that every time you start to discuss a new idea, you should move on to a new paragraph. Paragraphs should never contain more than one central idea. If a given idea has multiple points or facets, 
then each individual aspect of the idea should be given its own paragraph. And then check your paragraph for spelling and grammar. Once you have finished writing, it is essential that you reread your paragraph two or three times to check it for misspelled words in prior grammar. Spelling mistakes and bad grammar can significantly impact the perceived quality of your paragraph. Then, if the ideas and arguments it contains are of a high quality, it is very easy to overlook small mistakes then when writing, so don't skip the step, even if you are in a rush. And check your paragraph for coherence and style. Not only should the technical aspects of your writing be spot on, but you should also try to achieve clarity in your writing as well as stylistic flow. You can do this by varying the length and format of your sentences as by using transitional words in the right vocabulary. Decide if your paragraph is complete. Once you have reread the paragraph and fixed any grammatical or stylistic errors, you should have one more glance over it to determine whether it is complete. Try to look at the paragraph objectively and decide whether it sufficiently supports and develops your topic sentence or whether it needs a few more details or additional evidence to back up your claims. And revision. You are to, while getting ready to the seminar, you are to get ready for these tasks for these questions. What is a paragraph? What is the structure of the paragraph? What types of paragraphs are there? What, the, what are the paragraph principles? And what should the concluding sentences of your paragraph do? And how many central ideas should paragraph contain?